Medina, she lost her husband in one of the battles, in the battle. So then they took her, they took her to the Prophet and then she goes, oh, Alhamdulillah, I'm okay now. I feel good. Because as long as you're good, I'm good. Look at this. She's not lamenting on, oh, my mom, oh, my wife, oh, my husband. Oh my, my, my brother, oh my husband. She is more concerned with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These companions used to live such a life, subhanAllah. No wonder why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned some of them by way of ayat and on the town of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he said Abu Bakr is in Jannah. Umar radiallahu anhu is in Jannah. Uthman is in Jannah. Ali is in Jannah. Zubair is in Jannah. Talha is in Jannah. Saad is in Jannah. Khadija is in Jannah. Bilal is in Jannah. Today, you cannot even say these words about anyone. Everyone you're thinking about, oh my God, he's, Abdullah is not in the masjid. Abdullah is not right memorizing the hadith. Fatima is not doing anything good. Khadija is just on YouTube. Sumaya is on Facebook holding Dayman. Zainab, oh my God, she lost the plot. Uthman, oh, he's wearing earring on his ear. Abdul Rahman is on his iPhone all day. It's like a dream world, man. What's wrong with the Muslims today? What's wrong with the Muslims today? Why are we losing the plot? Why are we losing the plot? You can't be blaming your dad because my dad was jahil. He worshipped stones his whole life. But Alhamdulillah, I'm trying. My whole generation of Hindus, so don't give me that fix, you know, when my, my family, they are bit wobbly, you know, Imam, a bit wobbly kind of traditionalist. Forget about them, man, do your bit. What are you doing? You're pointing fingers. Do your bit to understand this religion. Then you will see how good this place will become be Allah Azza wa Jal. Abdullah ibn Umar asked his father, he says, Abdullah ibn Umar, Umar's son, <coughs> is asking him, Dad, why do you love Usama more than me? Omar says to him, because I love Usama because Usama's dad was closer to Rasulullah and more beloved than me and you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this, this Omar ibn al-Khattab, Abdullah Omar ibn al-Khattab is saying to his son, you know what? I love Osama because he was more loved. His father was closer. What the things that the Prophet loved, they love as well. The thing that the Prophet do, that's what they like to do. The thing that the Prophet used to appreciate, that's what they like. Today the Muslims are saying, Samina wa asaina. We hear and we disobey. Instead of saying Samina wa Ata'ana, we hear and we obey. What is wrong with the Muslims today? What is making you what is making people not thinking right? It's Harakat Tujaini, he says, whenever the companions of the Prophet mention him after the death, they would shiver. They would cry like a nervous wreck. You know, people they shiver, they shake. When they out of fear, when they hear his name, they will shiver because they miss him. They miss him so much that Bilal, whenever he, he, he used to give the Adhan every time, he would climb on the Kaaba and he would give the Adhan and then he would sing this Adhan beautifully and nice and he would be singing the Adhan melodiously and you know, bringing the Muslims together and bringing them for the salah and then everyone would leave everything and then they would go to the masjid because the salvation 
حيا على الصلاة قم تبريا حيا على الفلاح قم تسكسس قم تبريا قم تسكسس بلال رضي الله عنه he only probably gave the other once or twice after them why do you reckon this he says how can I say وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله how can I testify that Muhammad is the Rasul of Allah he is dead وأشهد أن محمد الرسول The companions when they hear his name they used to cry and weep because he's no longer there. That's a major catastrophe for this dunya. But everyone will die. إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ Verily you are, you will be, you will be dead. In the same way they are all dead. Every one of them, every one, as long as we bani Adam, we will die. Al Qadi al Iyad said he was also the Tabi'un used to do the same. Not only the companions who saw him, but even the children of these companions, even the Tabi'un, the second best generation. Musa ibn Abdullah says whenever Imam Malik would mention the Prophet, his complexion would change and he would bow down and his, his voice, he, would, he would cry so much the people. Could hardly hear him in the bayan. This is the Imam's pious predecessors. Abdullah ibn Hudafa as Sahmi. How many of you ever hear the name Abdullah ibn Hudafa as Sahmi? No one? Alright. So I'll tell you about Abdullah ibn Hudafa as Sahmi now. Abdullah ibn Hudafa as Sahmi, he was privileged to make two hijrah to Habasha and then to Medina. Abdullah ibn Hudaf al-Sahmi, he took the letter of al-Islam and he went to the Persian king and the, the, the court, the, the soldier says, what's your business? He goes, I want to see the king. Yeah, you, you want to see the king? You think you can really see the king? He says, of course I want to see the king. I have, a, I have a letter from Muhammad, the messenger of God. I have a message from Rasulullah. I can't give you guys, I have to give the king himself. In another episode, Abdullah ibn Hudhafa, the Roman king, he was so happy when he heard that his, his men, the Roman, this Roman king, he was so happy when he heard, you know what, there is a Sahaba, we have captured a Sahaba today. One of our prisoners of war is a Sahaba. His name is Abdullah ibn Hudhafa as sahmi So this king became very happy and he says, Oh, I need to see him now. Who bring him? Because he had this kind of mentality that the genes of the Arabs are something that is tremendous and is amazing. And he was becoming very happy. And he goes to him, bring him, I want to see him. And he goes to Abdullah ibn Hudhafa Sahmi. I will marry you to my daughter because he was fantasizing that the genes of the Arab will make his progeny one that is good, stay in power forever. Then he says, I will give, marry you to my daughter and I will give you half of my kingdom, but you will have to leave Islam. Abdullah ibn Khudaf sahmi says, no way. King got upset. He said, are you saying my wealth doesn't value anything to you? Are you saying my daughter doesn't mean anything to you? He says, no. Islam. He understood this message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This Roman king, he, this this Roman king, he wanted to now put fear into him. He says, "Go bring me another Muslim someday." And he put a fire with a massive, huge pot and oil boiling, and then he ordered his men to put this guy, this guy, into this pot. Abdullah ibn Hudhafa Sahmi says, and his meat just roasted like instantly. And then he goes. Take him. So the soldiers now holding Abdullah ibn Hudhafa Sahmi, taking him towards his fire, and then they saw him crying. And the king goes, Ah, I've broken him now. Bring him back. Let's see what he's made of. Abdullah ibn Hudhafa Sahmi says, Don't you reckon I was crying because you're going to burn me? I was crying because I wish I had 100 lives. 100. 100. Zero, zero. 
I wish I had 100 lives. A subnoration, 100 souls. So you can burn me 100 times. Today, as soon as the Imam says, you know what? We don't like this message anymore. Man goes wobbly. Man doesn't attend the lecture anymore. Because you know why? Hadith too strong. We can't take this strong hadith. This talin and this understanding, we don't like it. So now I'm banned from the cities of the UK. But you know what is beauty? You know what's really beautiful? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really merciful. I just sit in my room and I just speak to the nation and just upload YouTube, Google. So I'm a Googler now. Look, my little Abdulaziz is a massive Googler. 10 years old. Rendering the videos and uploading for free. <laughs> no Imam is giving me no grief anymore. <laughs> so Alhamdulillah, isn't that great? Allah, this deen needs to go on. We need to tell the people the haq. Tell the people how the Sahaba used to live. Why do you think Abdullah ibn Hudafa? Oh my God, I haven't even completed the story, man. This king, subhanAllah, I, I just go strain sometimes, yeah, I'm too happy, is it? <laughs> Are you bored now? No. You want me to stop, go back to Bradford? No, no, no. And Liverpool is cool, isn't it? <laughs> it's really cool to speak about Rasul. This king, he goes, you know what? SubhanAllah, the king says, come here. To Abdul Ibn Hudafa Sahmi. And he, hold, he held him like this, and he kissed him in the head. Ah, I like you. I just love you. This Roman king was gonna burn him on mine a while ago. Now he's kissing his head. Because he's strong on the deep. He freed him, he freed the rest of the Muslims. And when he arrived in Medina, Umar ibn al-Khattab, he held him and he kissed him on his head. Ah, beautiful. I love you. Look at this, the message. They love Rasulullah to such an extent that he wished if he could burn, he burned a hundred times. I don't even want to be seen with this Imam from Medina because I'll be Bogey Wahhabi style. <laughs> what's wrong? What's Wahhabi? What's these names, man? Wahhab was a scholar of Deen. So if you see my uncle is Bob Marley, you call Bob Marley. <laughs> I'm a Bradford, so Bradford. What is these names? These jahil customs and practices. You Muslim or you're not a Muslim? Eh? You can't be Mu'zabzabina by Nadalik. La ilaha ula wa la ilaha ula. You're wobbling away from him. Like a wah. He just not with them and not with them. Just, it, uh, you know, I, I'm a moderate Muslim. <laughs> Why is moderate Muslim? A moderate Muslim is one who prays five times a day. And he eats halal. And he doesn't lie. And he doesn't steal. And he doesn't tell lies, subhanAllah. He doesn't pop, bite, and slander. In the masjid, it's all nice. Even when he comes, he gives you a nice hug, mashallah. Mashallah, Imam, I haven't seen you in ages. My man is hugging me with two hands and his two dad is four sided. Stabbing me in my back. Is that the way you show love to the people? And in front of his face, you're all good and nice. And behind his back here, what a hypocrite. For the signs of a hypocrite. Is that the way you show love? Look at these companions, what they did. They spend their life, their wealth, their health, their understanding, their religion, everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Virtues of the Sahaba. Virtues of the Sahaba, ayyuhan nas. Yeah, close it, because I'm afraid someone might just jump in there and just give me a knockover. <laughs> and I was, in a, I was in a masjid last week, and I was doing this bayan. Some guys wanted to wind me up, you know, like make me angry. So the more stupid things you do, I kind of laugh at you, you know what I'm saying? Because 
It's like you haven't done me anything. The guys came, parked the car right outside the bayan where the bayan was given, and they turned on some bilad music, some massive songs, and I'm like, Subhanallah, what's happening outside there? Here you go. Virtue of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum. Of the belief in the Sahaba, belief in the good character of the Sahaba, and the virtue of these Sahaba is, a, is, some, is something that's is basic. You know, you have to believe in the Sahaba, and you have to have these good feelings about the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised them. He's given them spe special virtues and noble characteristics. And he sallallahu alayhi wa was because then he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was careful when he put the message. The message was something that's meant. You see, if I was to give guys a task in this room here, yeah? If I want someone to come and lift this table, yeah? I'm, I'm sitting on this table, yes? And I want someone to lift this table with me and take me over there. I can't be looking at my little brother down here because look, he hasn't got no muscles. <laughs> in the room. What's your name? Show me your muscles. <laughs> See, he hasn't got no muscles. I'll be looking at my big brother over there. Mashallah, the bark Allah. There you go. Imam, where do you want to go? That's what? Fine, let's go. See, I have to give you tasks that you are capable of doing. I can't be giving you a task that you go wobbly. Can I do that to you? That's done. Oppression. So now the Prophet said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was very careful in who he was to give this message. So he gave this message to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give the people around him to be wobblers. Otherwise the message will go wrong. It will all go bad. So he had to choose the men who were around him who were good men, strong men. So if these men understood this message, then we have to appreciate these men, these Sahaba radiallahu anhum. We can't be, Wallahi, I did one bayan on Abu Bakr radiallahu anh for one hour, and then we posted this bayan. And you know, to my amazement, there was like about 15, 20,000 hits on this bayan. Um, hits means so many people saw the bayan, yeah? So every time someone sees the bayan, it's called a hit, a view, one view. Thousands of bayan. And the comments below were comments, Abu Bakr is in hell. I'm like, oh. <laughs> what's happening here? Well, I missed this hadith. Abu Bakr is a really nasty word, you know. I don't even want to say that word. It's like they use the whole alphabet, man. Explaining him. You know the bad boy language on the street? You know the funny ones? You know them, don't tell me that. <laughs> yeah. So, wallahi, you, you cheat the comments on this, on this. What is wrong with the Muslims today? I'm saying Abu Bakr is in Jannah. I'm giving hundreds of ayat and hadith. There you go, 56 to 78 to 90 people say Abu Bakr is in hell. And Omar is in hell. And Uthman is in hell. hell. What is wrong? Aisha is, and they gave her nasty names. What is wrong with these people? What's wrong with the Muslims, subhanAllah? These companions, when they were blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen them. Ibn al-Qayyim says, Allah knows best where to place his message, both with regard to the original recipient and those who inherited from him. He knows best who is fit to receive the message and convey it to his slave in, in a trustworthy and sincere manner, respecting the sender and fulfilling his duties towards him, patiently following his commandments and showing gratitude for his blessings and drawing close to him and he knows who is not fit for that. Sim similarly, he knows best who among the nation is fit to be the ears of the Prophet and to succeed them and convey the message that we will receive from their Lord in Tariq al Hijra time. Ibn al Qayyim al Jawzi, page 171. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah al Fatih, 48, verse 18, Laqad mu'minina if you bayarunaka tahta shajara, fa'alima ma fi qulubihim fa'anzalat fa'anzalat sakina alayhim. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with the believers when they gave the bay'ah, this pledge to the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa under the tree. He knew what was in their hearts and he sent down his sakina, calmness and tranquility upon them. And he rewarded them with a, with a close victory. 
How beautiful are the words of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud when he says, Let uh, who, whoever among you wishes to follow someone, that you should some, follow someone who is dead. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is saying, if you want to wish, if you wish to follow someone and you follow someone from the Salaf of Salih, the pious predecessors who are dead, because the one who is alive is not safe from the fitna. Wallahi is not safe from the fitna. I have been doing this dawah for six years in this country that's called Guyana. Do you know where is Guyana? Where is Guyana? Latin America. Next to what? West Indies, the Caribbean. Yeah, come on, close that one, some more close and closeness, come on. The countries around Guyana, Trinidad, Brazil, Venezuela, Suriname, Argentina, Peru, Chile, Paraguay, Latin America. Mafia, bro, ain't it? Any man? Have you been there? I'll be checking your profile in a minute, you know. <laughs> what was I saying? Guyana. Eh? Guyana. No, I wasn't saying Guyana, I was saying something else. Six years. Six years. Six years. Wallahi, six years. I'm sitting there giving my life every day. And one day, one guy, he just got up. Wallahi, every single book you can name for Uthaymeen, Ibn Baz, Salih Al Fawzan, Sheikh Ibn Baz. Rahimahumullah, Ibn al Qayyim al Jawzi, Ibn Taymi, you name the books Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood, Sharh al Sunan al Arba'un al Nabawiyya. Wallahi, you name the books and he has them in his library. And one day, my man got up and he says, You know what, Imam? I'm not a Salafi now, you know. I said, What? So, what are you then? He goes, you know what, I am uh, Shia now. I said, why, why are you Shia man? He goes, you know what, because, you know, I've got this new idea that Jesus is dead, you know, you wrote a donkey into Jerusalem and he's dead. You know, he said, in fact, he's an Ahmadi. Ahmadi, you know, the Ahmadis, they believe that Jesus wrote a donkey into, into Yemen, in the books, that's in the books. I'm not here to pick on anyone. <laughs> I'm not here to pick on anyone. If you go read the books, you will see that, yeah, Jesus rode a donkey into Jerusalem and he's dead. That's the belief of the Qadiyani. Yeah. So my man goes, so I said, so, wait, so you turn Ahmadi then? He goes, yeah. I said, so what's the belief from the Quran? He says, Inni mutawafika wa rafi'uka ilayya. That Allah says, I will cause you to die. But you know this one, mutawafika also means cause you to sleep. So you believe now, you believe that Jesus is dead. Oh my God. I said, so what are you going to do with the books then? Uh, maybe I'll borrow them. Oh no man, give me them. I want them for free. And then you take some free books. So this is the kalam of Abdullah ibn Masood. He's saying here, if you want to follow the Salaf, follow the one who was upon the haq, understanding the religion, and he died upon this. Because the man who is alive today, he's going to be one kalam today, and he changes his mind tomorrow or something else.